Well, hey there, neighbor. It's me, Angie. Come on in. We're about to have our neighborhood chat. Yeah, it's that time. I know it comes around so often, but I so enjoy you coming by and us having our little chats. It helps me so much, and I hope it helps you too. Oh, don't forget your drink. I have anything you should want. You think of it, and I probably have it. Uh, soda pop, uh, sweet tea, lemonade, uh, sports drinks, you know, for your electrolytes and all that. If the, you travel very far, then you might need be a little dehydrated. But anyway, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, yeah, and I have coffee. Just about anything you could want, I have to drink. Well, today, neighbor, this is going to be one of those one of those talks that you got to come in and listen really close. Because if you don't, you may misunderstand what I'm trying to say. And you know what? When you misunderstand something, sometimes it just gets us on edge and we just get defensive about it. And I don't want you to get defensive about any conversation that we have. Because in the comments, I want you to put your thoughts about everything we discuss. Because after all, it is a neighborhood chat. It's for all of us to get involved in. It's just not for me to talk and you never respond. And boy, do y'all respond. Y'all always respond to my chats. And I'm so thankful. But today, I think we're going to talk about Look, I just want to be honest with you all. And I don't know how much plainer I can say this without just blatantly saying it. If you don't know who you are, find out. Be the true you. Be who you really are. And if you don't know, have a desire to find out. You know, from the time we're born, I would say that we were probably programmed by our parents in some way, some shape or some form on how we're, how we're supposed to be. Uh, we've talked about it before. You know, we were told to behave like this, act like this, do this. Which, you know, in reality, we should have been taught things right and wrong. But sometimes parents go to the extreme and the child loses who they really are in all that demanding a child to be perfect. I never demanded that out of my children for them to, to be a perfect child because I knew they wasn't going to be. And I was never one of those parents to say, oh, my child would never do that. No, no. I knew and I remembered when I was a teenager so I had no intention of saying that about my children. But I, I always kept an open communication with my children to let them know that they could always come to me or James about anything. Now, was there going to be consequences to things that they did that we didn't approve of? Well, of course there's going to be consequences. But I wasn't under the... A, delusion or illusion that they were not going to try to do something outside the boundaries of what we wanted them to do. Just like we all have. We do that as adults today. We step out of the boundaries of places and we go and do things that we know are not right. And we do them. You know, and then when we pay the consequences, it's like we're shocked and we don't understand why Wait, why did this happen to me? Why am I going through this? Well, if we would think back and look back, we would probably pinpoint the very thing that caused us to be going through what we're going through right now. Now, bad things happen to good people. We've talked about that before. And there's some things that you just cannot control that happen. But we live in an imperfect world. So... Bad things are going to happen to good people. A lot of times, that's hard for us to accept. And it, you know, it should be. I mean, 
it takes us a while to accept things like that. And then we don't understand why evil people or people that are nasty seem like they just float along and nothing ever bad ever happens to them. And we just get resentful about that. Well, why don't they ever have to go through anything? Do you see how their life is? They're so mean to people and they're so, they lie and cheat and steal and they still turn out things are great for them. Well, we don't really know that's true or not because people pretend every day to be something that they're not. I think I let go of that probably when I live working at the bank. I let go of anything that I was pretending to be. I just, I just let it go. And it was the most freeing feeling that I had ever had in my entire life is to become the person that I was meant to be. And that's what I want for you. I want you to be the person that you're meant to be. Uh, the person that you know deep down that you feel comfortable with. But for some reason, when you get around people or certain people, you become this totally different person. Uh, and it's strange to me that even as adults, uh, people want to be accepted into a group of people, you know, a, a clique. I don't know why. I may be the only one that really, I don't mind being part of a group of, of people, but I don't just chase after that. You know, I, I never did that in high school. I never wanted to be part of the popular kids. Um, I never wanted to be with the girls very much because they were so dramatic and, and they just kept stuff going and they would talk about each other and backstab and oh I didn't want to be a part of that and I don't want to be a part of that today um I used to judge that you know I used to talk really really bad about people that were like that up until several years ago because it would just anger me so much that adults could sit around and talk about uh other people, especially women. Women are so bad about, you know, it's called a henpecking party, you know, uh, to see which one can get to the top first, whatever that's supposed to mean. I don't know. We had that going really, really uh, bad at the bank, you know, women trying to move up the the ladder. I don't really know. It just, I never understood it. You know, and one day you're somebody's best friend and the next day they can't stand you and they talk about you and they tell your darkest secrets. And we've talked about that before. But what I want to share with you today and try to talk to you about is why don't you just come, back, come forth and just say who you really are and be who you really are. And if you don't know, start finding out. Start with that feeling of things you like, things you are, are for, things you are against, uh, your beliefs. Uh, you don't have to believe like your immediate family has always believed. I mean, you can choose to have beliefs that you want to have now that you're an adult. You don't have to stick with what your grandmother did or your mother did or I mean, if you want to, that's fine, but there's no law that says you have to do that. You know, I'll give you an example. In my family, we used to buy Lipton tea, blue plate mayonnaise, uh, sunbeam bread, uh, community, uh, not community coffee, Folgers coffee. These were uh, regular things that my family just bought. So, I guess it was just understood when I became an adult and would shop, I would buy those same brands. Well, you know, one day they were out of uh, Blue Plate mayonnaise. And I switched to Dukes. That's all they had. I come home and Taylor's like, oh, mama, don't ever buy that other mayonnaise. Keep buying this. So, I, that's all we use now is Duke mayonnaise. 
Now, that's just a small example of something that, uh, that I'm trying to get you to understand. You don't always have to do what your grandparents and your parents did. Now, see, there was nothing wrong with blue plate mayonnaise, but I just made a choice to do something different. Sometimes there's no right or wrong in anything. It's just a choice to do something different. You know, a lot of times people can't deal with other people's choices. You know, and it's about that person wanting to control that other person. It's the reason that they don't want them to change. Now me, I think change is good. A lot of people will tell you, I hate change. I don't like change. I don't want to change. You know, but change can be good. I mean, if we didn't have change, look, where would the world be? We wouldn't have these iPhones that we're recording on right now. But because, you know, change can be good. So don't ever look at change as being bad. Don't ever look at yourself as uh, the reason you're suffering is because you've done something really, really bad. You know, and don't sit around saying, why me? Why did this happen? What did I do? No, no. I could easily do that. I could easily wake up in the morning and be angry and bitter and sad and mad because of the situation that I'm in. I'm in a wheelchair. Uh, I'll probably never, ever walk again. Uh, now, that was a hard pill for me to swallow at first, but now I, I, I've dealt with it and I've accepted it. You know, acceptance is a very, very good thing. Once you accept something, you can move on. A lot of us haven't accepted things in our life that's happened. We still are fighting things that happened five or ten years ago that don't even really matter now to the person that was involved. It only matters to you. And it still has that wound that is open and it hasn't healed yet. And you haven't allowed it to heal and you haven't moved on. I've been there too. I mean, some of us have so many wounds that we probably need oxygen uh, because of the pain that we suffer on the inside. You know, we cover up a lot of our pain. Uh, I can't imagine some of the things that you all, you all have been through. You don't know the pain that I've been through. But as long as we come out of it and can look back and talk about we overcome it. You know, these people that stay in pain and talk about how there's, they've been in it 20 or 25 years and they just stuck, you know, I want them to come out of it so they can talk about how they conquered it and how much better they feel and how much better their life is. You know, I may be physically handicapped, but my physical handicap was not as bad as my depression. When I used to suffer from depression because I can honestly say it was something that was happening to me that I could not control. And I wanted to control it and I could not control it so I would get depressed about it. And a lot of times our depression, and not all depression, comes from something that we cannot control or we couldn't control that happened to us, that are that is happening to us. Well, we should just let it go and trust. I have to trust God because that's my belief. I don't know what your beliefs are set in. That's for you to deal with. But you have to know that this outer layer that you're viewing right now of me, it's not really who I am. Who I am is on the inside, and it's a being that is made up of light that is shining on you to bring some kind of awareness to tell you that it's okay to be who you are, to say to people, no, I don't like that, or stop treating me that way. Or I'm not dealing with this anymore. Or you don't understand what I'm going through. And if you can't understand it and you can't support me, then I don't need you in my life. Or you bring me down. 
You know, who wants to be around people that bring them down 24-7? How can you conquer depression being around somebody that, number one, does not support you uh, mentally, physically, uh, financially, or all that? How can you possibly come out of that depression? You can't. Some of us are scared to be out on our own because we've always had somebody there. Uh, we'd rather stay in the situation that we're in now rather to go into something different because we fear change. We fear failure. We fear that it's going to be worse than what we have it now. But could it be? I mean, you don't know until you try. I mean, in the mornings when I wake up, I honestly just turn my whole day over to God and say, God, whatever you want to happen, allow me to be able to accept whatever comes today. If I'm in pain, if it's one of those days, I continually pray through the day, Lord, this is a very painful day. I accept it, but please take it from me because I can't, I can't deal with the pain anymore. And it never fails. The pain eases up. Now that may be something that doesn't matter to a lot of people because they don't deal with a lot of physical pain. But I'm using that as a reference for me. But yours may be something else. Depression, sadness, anger, bitterness. Something that's causing you not to go forward to have positivity in your life. When you have all those things in your life, Good things cannot come through. I don't know if you know that or not. But if you're holding on to anger and bitterness and sorrow and hatred and uh, vengeance and always wanting to talk about somebody and backstab them and get ahead and always want the attention. And you know, negative attention, people will try to do that. And they would rather be all negative than to be a productive citizen of this world. Stop being that way. Stand on your own two feet. You know why? Because you can. You know, when when you get to a certain age, you got to quit blaming people for the way that you are. I mean, you cannot continue to blame uh, the way you are on your parents when you're 50-something years old. When you have a mind that can choose to be different, make different choices. You know, we're here where we are in our life today because of choices that we have made. Uh, we've either made bad financial decisions, bad emotional decisions, bad physical decisions. Um, it's just been choices. Now, can we change that? Well, of course we can, no matter how old we are. We can change our mindset. You can wake up and realize that you are enough. You can stand on your own two feet. Don't be afraid to make a choice. I've always been the type of person. I can make a decision. It may be the wrong decision, but I can make one. I don't let somebody tell me how to think, how to believe uh, what I should do. Now, I'll take your advice, and I'll weigh it out, and I may do it. I may not. But I can think for myself. Think for yourself. You can do it. If you mess up and fail, everybody has. Do you know how many millionaires that we have in this world today that have actually filed bankruptcy? I don't know how many times. Because they've actually failed Failure is growth because failure lets you know, oh, I'm not going to do that again. So it's okay to fail. What is not okay is not trying. You've got to keep trying and moving. And I'm saying this, neighbor, because I love you dearly. And I want you to become happy, peaceful. You know, life is so much easier when you have peace. I don't like somebody to come in and disrupt my peace. I like to have peace. That's why I don't 
get involved in drama, uh, who said what, uh, who's doing what, you know, the latest, oh, guess what she did? Oh, we're not going to like her anymore because she did this, or she said this, or she looks like this. How childish can we be? That is so childish. So I'm telling you, neighbor, let's grow up. Let's decide to stand on our own two feet and don't be envious and jealous of anybody because maybe they look better. They have more than you. You don't live with them. You don't know the nights at their house. You don't live on the inside. They may argue and fight with their husband or their spouse every day of their life. They may cry themselves to sleep every night. They may be in so much debt that they cannot even sleep because they don't know how they're going to pay their, their light bill. You don't know people's circumstances. They can pretend all day long. But you'll know if somebody's real or not. You'll know. And that's what I want you to be. That's what I thrive to be every day is to be real. I want to be real as real can get because I want the light to come in, continually come into my life and let me radiate the light to others and bring light to their darkness. I want to be used by a higher power to help others. I don't want to just be selfish and want things from others for no apparent reason. You know? But neighbor, you know I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. So strive to find out who you really are and go for it. Do the things you've never done before. Try little things. Man, we only have a short time here in this world and then we go on somewhere else don't wait till you're 70 years old and 75 if you live to be that age and say oh man I wish I would have did this or I wish I would have done that no laugh more smile more I mean laugh out loud love more I mean the only reason people don't love is because they've been hurt before and they don't want to feel that pain. But what you don't realize is when you don't expect anything from anybody, love is easy. You just choose to love them. Don't ever expect anything from somebody. Just give out your love and when you're independent and you're living on your own and you're growing, you can do that. And with that being said, neighbor, like, share, subscribe, ring that bell so you'll know the next time I'm coming to you with a video. And please comment because you know I absolutely love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Bye, neighbor.